Um, I will hand it over to Jemias as he uh, just will say hello, and then we'll get to some questions. Go ahead, Jemias. How y'all doing, everybody? Oh, um, willing to take the time out, ask a few questions, get to know me. Um, let's have fun. We'll start here with Sean Cunningham. Hey, Jemias. I uh, hope you're doing well. I uh, got to speak with you a little bit last night. Uh, you looked like the, the draft party was pretty good. You're surrounded by friends and family. What did that mean to you to be able to kind of celebrate that moment with them, especially with everything that's gone on in 2020? Uh, it meant a lot. Um, one moment uh, I've been waiting for my whole life um, happened last night. It felt great. It was really special. Um, like you said, I got to celebrate with my friends and family. Wouldn't ask for it to be any other way. And then, you know, it's been pretty well documented, just kind of your path to the to the NBA, going through Texas Tech and so many different high schools. Um, your high school journey, what did what did that what did you take from that playing so many different kind of programs before getting to Texas Tech? And, and what did that do to your confidence this past season? Um, really, I could just play anywhere um, like as far as I don't need to be home or I don't have to feel just super secure in one area. Um, as far as high school, I play in four different high schools, as you all know. So I feel like that helped me just be able to play anywhere, be able to take different coaching, um, adjust really well in different environments. Um, that's what it helped me with a lot. Okay, James Ham. Hey, how's it going? What do you think you need to work on to to really solidify your spot in the NBA? What it, what are sort of your points of emphasis that you've worked on this summer or that you need to continue to improve on? Um, ball handling, uh, coming off the ball screen, making different reads, not coming off just to score, um, and different finishes, floaters, up and unders, things like that. This is a young team, and they're, they're looking to run. Is that something that plays to your strengths? Yes, it does. Uh, I feel like I'm great in transition. Okay, we will go to Matt George, KHDK. How's it going? Uh, I got the opportunity to ask uh, Tyrese this. I'm curious about uh, your answer to the same thing. Uh, the This 2020 draft experience has been really weird, and, and the draft class has been labeled by some experts as a weaker class. I'm curious – uh, Tyrese says he hopes that the class takes that personally, that he takes that personally. I'm, I'm curious how you approach that when you hear that, especially as a, a second round pick in today's NBA. Uh, for me personally, um, for me, it's really just prove myself. I, don't, I can't really speak for the entire class. If people feel like our class is weak, uh, that's their personal opinion. Um, just like uh, I was selected in the second round. Um, but for me, it's really just all about proving myself. Um, that's what it's always been about my entire life. So nothing new. Jason Jones, athletic. Hey, Jemias, how you doing? Good, how are you? Doing all right. Um, saw a video of you throwing the ball off the, the wall behind the backboard, catching it and dunking it. But I've also seen a lot of people talk about your three-point shot and how you're a, a, what a great shooter you are. How, do you, how have you been able to blend – that combination of shooting and also knowing when to attack and show off that athleticism and get into the rim? Uh, just in the flow of the game. Uh, I feel like next year is way more space, much more opportunity uh, to get to the basket than there was in college. College was pretty much everything was tight and impact. So I had to find another way to score, and that's where the jump shot played a major part for me. How do you feel about your range at the, at the, at the end? NBA range. How, how much have you been working on this? That uh, NBA three. How comfortable are you shooting it right now? I'm um, very comfortable. I have more than enough time because uh, the draft play to get used to shooting from that deep. So I'm pretty comfortable. Okay, Michelle Dapper. Jamias, congrats. Um, tell me, uh, what do you think you bring to the Sacramento Kings team? What are some things you do well? We just heard what you can improve on, but what are some things you do on the court well? I feel like I'm great in transition as far as making decisions um, in transition. I feel like I can catch and shoot really well or catch off a, catch and shoot off a pin down, run off screens. Uh, I feel like I'm a pretty good secondary ball handler. Um, and then my defensive ability, I feel like I make the big plays, um, stay in front of my man, um, get out in transition off a steal, go make a big highlight play. And of course, in Lubbock, Texas Tech is is kind of where it's at. Have you heard anything about the Sacramento Kings fans and and how loyal they are and how loud the arena can get when when you guys are playing in there? 
Uh, I haven't heard anything yet. You're going to have some fun. <laughs> For sure. Okay. Uh, Carlos Silva down in Lubbock. Hey, Jemias, just kind of wanted to get your perspective on this. Like, I know everyone's going to be talking about the, the long layoff from the NBA draft, and obviously it happened yesterday. But for you, what, what did you learn about yourself having that time away from basketball? Uh, a lot of growth and areas that I won't talk about, but a key one for me is patience. Um, the draft taught me patience, being pushed back. COVID, not really being able to do anything, but the same thing that you do uh, for me was the same thing repetitively. Uh, so it taught me a lot about patience, um, being able to stick to a routine, continue to do it. Um, so, yeah, patience. Last night, obviously, a special night. You were one of 60 guys that obviously heard their name. I guess for you, when you finally did find out that you were going to get picked, I guess what, what were the emotions you felt after all the work you kind of put in to kind of get to that point? Uh, I was really thankful. Uh, that was the most emotion I felt. I was super thankful. Uh, I worked my entire life for the moment to get my name called. I'm out there, so I'm really thankful, and I'm just ready to get to work. Uh, Billy Watson. Hey, Jemias, congratulations again. Uh, what are some of the things you kind of take from Lubbock and being with Coach Beard, uh, some of the things you learned here and uh, that you can take to the NBA with the Sacramento Kings? Um, balance and life so I can be my best on the court. Uh, basically having something off the court because I love being in the gym, working out, um, that whole basketball process, I'm dedicated to that 100%. I don't really have a balance, um, but at Texas Tech, I kind of found out a little bit in video games, uh, going to watch movies, um, and helping perform better on the court. And secondly, uh, you're going to be playing with Tyrese Halliburton, also part of Big 12, and you got to play him, uh, see him at Iowa State. Have you contacted him at all about uh, playing with him with the Kings, and uh, how cool is it going to be to be uh, seeing a familiar face? Uh, yes, we've texted. Uh, last night and a little bit this morning. Uh, it was going to be really great uh, playing with somebody from my conference. Uh, he earned it. I've earned it. Uh, it's going to be special. It's going to have a lot of fun. Okay, we can take some backup questions. Sean Cunningham. Yeah, just um, I was curious, you, you know, you come from the Dallas area and it seems like you guys, all the guys from the Dallas area kind of owned the night last night. And what was it, how, how was it kind of being able to experience uh, that with so many guys that you come from the same hometown and, and see so many guys go to uh, various teams in the same draft? Uh, it was great growing up here, playing with some of those guys, uh, playing against some of them. Uh, we all know each other. We're all happy for each other. We're all from the same city. We all feel like Texas is the best state uh, with basketball production. So it was really great to see uh, all of us get drafted and everything. And then in talking to you last night, mentioned that you didn't really have much interaction with um, Sacramento before the before the draft. But um, now that you are a member of the Kings, just what's the first impressions of the organization and the interactions you have had since being called by them? Uh, they have had certain players contact me, um, key players on their team. That means a lot. Uh, let me know that they are happy I'm there and they're all work as well as I am. Matt George, KCK. You talked about working on your patience and how you were forced to kind of build your patience with this long draft process. But now that the draft is over and training camp is a couple of weeks away and opening night of the season, just over a month away, uh, the patient's about to pay off. How's the anticipation, I guess, getting to work right away now? Uh, it's really high, extremely high. Can't even put a number on it. Um, I'm, I'm super ready, super pumped to get out there um, and give them all, give them all, 